Um, but uh, I am Katie English. Uh, I am the uh, Charles Edge replacement. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, same snark, different packaging. It's, that's, that's really all that's going on there. Um, if we haven't already met, if you're not familiar with Jamf, just very quickly, uh, our mission is to help organizations succeed with Apple, and uh, that includes companies, schools, hospitals, governments. Uh, and we believe that uh, a combination of Apple and Jamf creates an, uh, an environment that empowers uh, people with uh, the best possible technology to uh, succeed and, and serve their users. Uh, I've been with Jamf for about five and a half years. Uh, prior to that, I, as, as you mentioned, I was uh, uh, in higher ed for about 14 years. So uh, yesterday, Crisco posted a, a thing during the, the workshop that he, he went all the way back, all the way back to 1999 uh, to, to say uh, uh, who actually managed Max back then. That would be me. I was the, the poor slob in the help desk. Uh, literally started the day after I graduated, and I was the only person who really understood the whole Mac thing. And in fact, it wasn't even uh, OS 9 at that point. It was, there were still some 8.6 around in the world. So um, I've been around doing this for a little bit. Uh, I was a Jamf customer prior to joining Jamf as a remote employee, and these days I live in, in Minneapolis. Uh, I direct the professional services team one of my, my nerds is right up there, Dan McLaughlin. Uh, we are a global team of about uh, 20 people, depending on how you count it, uh, who travel the world and help our customers uh, succeed with our product. Uh, so my topics today. I'm going to do a quick year in review, just a, a, a quick kind of a, a tour of the highlights of, of Jamf's year. We've had a busy year. Um, and then I'm going to brag a little bit, and I'm actually taking a page from Eric, uh, sharing the awesome. My team is amazing, and we have a lot of brilliant nerds who have built a lot of brilliant tools. And so I'd like to, to uh, show off a little bit on their behalf um, and set up a, a preview for my session tomorrow as well. So, All right. Uh, you might have heard a couple of the, uh, the interesting things that happened for Janf last year. We were acquired. That part's not as interesting. The most important part is <laughs> Jamf version 10 was released at our user conference uh, last October. And uh, for a lot of people, this was like a, a wildly overdue visual overhaul uh, with a lot of really good uh, cues and uh, usability features for our, our admins. And so just to quickly take a tour of that, um, we have shiny dashboards. We, these, again, this is one of those finally features, like finally, we have shiny dashboards. Yay, cool. Uh, we also uh, have some better table views so that you can sort your data and actually present it in a way that's more meaningful to you, the admin. Uh, this collapsible menu, it actually gets out of your way so you can see more of the stuff that matters on your screen. We have breadcrumbs. This is huge, by the way, to figure out where the heck you are and uh, present, especially if you're, I don't know, on a support call, and they're like, what are you looking at right now? It's super easy to actually report that now with our, our breadcrumbs on the screen. Contextual warnings. These are just smarter ways to tell you, hey, something's not right here. Uh, if that's maybe a certificate that's expiring, you know, that token that uh, needs attention, maybe you've exceeded your license count, or maybe something's not right in the policy that you're setting up. We have better ways of talking to our admins about uh, how they can fix that. And with responsive design, uh, everything looks way, way cooler on our iOS devices as well. I have more to say about that in just a second. Um, but that was October, and we've been super busy since then. Uh, not everybody's had a chance to catch up to version 10. Maybe you're looking for the killer feature that you're like, yeah, you know what, I'm good on 9, but you're waiting for the, the, the cool feature. Well, I've got some, some stuff to kind of provide as far as updates, and maybe you hear the thing you're waiting for. Uh, in 10.1, we released Microsoft Conditional Access, which allows us to integrate with Microsoft Intune. Uh, we're very much uh, of the mind that you should use the best tool possible to manage the uh, uh, clients that you're, you're concerned about. So. Jamf, we love our, our Apple products, and we believe we're the best of breed for that management. Um, Microsoft, 
they're pretty good at that Windows thing. So you can combine them both and get your single pane of glass uh, reporting and also uh, compliance uh, uh, in, in one location. And also provide uh, uh, user-friendly remediation to say, you are not yet compliant, but if you go here and enroll or follow these policies, then you will be compliant and gain access to the, the features that you need. This one kind of kills me because as a former university admin, um, maybe some folks in the room can sympathize, uh, I had a need to maintain patch levels at some ridiculous static state for a semester or possibly longer at a time. Having an external patch source like we released in 10.2 would have been amazing. Rather than find out, yes, I know I'm 15 uh, versions behind on Google Chrome, but I need this version for an instructional purpose, I can set my patch uh, levels with an external server and not worry about those notifications that aren't necessarily pertinent in a, a slower moving environment. Uh, this has been referred to, I think Eric already talked about it today. Yesterday we talked about it in the workshop as well. Uh, user approved MDM is uh, kind of like supervision for Mac OS and it's an interesting world that we're finding ourselves in. Uh, and in 10.13.2 of Mac OS, we start seeing these pop-ups uh, to say, hey, your, your uh, system kernel extension for VMware uh, needs to be approved. Um, if we're enrolled prior to 10.13.4, we are grandfathered. If we have DEP, DEP counts as, as user-approved MDM, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, this, we have been uh, doing a lot of work in the product background to make this experience um, a little less tedious and challenging for, for admins, so much so that we actually built in a remediation workflow in uh, 10.4 that will be automatically presented to end users when they launch self-service. Hey, you need to uh, remediate, or hey, you need to approve these kernel extensions. Uh, and so that actually, it, you don't have to worry about it. This will take care of that for you. I'm not sure for how many people in the room GDPR is relevant, but if you have any users in the EU, you have to think about it because, of course, we have the, the new right to be forgotten. Uh, we had to release a supplemental update 1041 to allow Jamf Pro to do uh, some significant scrubbing of the database to make sure we're removing all traces of a user when it's required by an organizational need. So that was a, a non-trivial uh, undertaking. Uh, of course, it's uh, supposedly easy to click on a user and delete, but we needed to make sure that it was actually a complete process. So that was a, a supplemental update. And this is one of those finally features. Finally, iOS self-service. This just came out in 10.5. Uh, it's super pretty now. Uh, we're heading toward a stage where we're going to be able to brand it just like we do for Mac OS. Uh, it's responsive, it's lovely, it's nice to work with, it's, it's that finally feature. This is one of those other finally features. Be able to disable or enable Bluetooth en masse or per device. This is super cool. Um, it's one of those things, especially in an education environment. Kids are going to be kids, they're going to try to get away with stuff. Well, as long as they're on Wi-Fi or you can uh, connect to an Ethernet dongle, you can get those devices back on Bluetooth. So that's just a quick highlight reel. Like I said, our devs have been a little busy. We do have some cool stuff coming though. So uh, our 10.6 beta just got announced publicly on JF Nation. And there's a few cool features there. I mentioned conditional access uh, for Mac OS, which we released in 10.1. Coming up in 10.6, we have it for iOS as well. Again, we're all about the best of breed management, so your Mac and your iOS can be managed by Jamf and report up into Intune so that you get the single pane of glass experience. We're also uh, able to integrate with Active Directory certificate services uh, as a PKI, per <clears throat> excuse me, PKI provider. So that's gonna be an adventure. We'll see uh, how many people take us up on that. Jeff Pro Server Tools, this is one of those like not super sexy features, but gosh, it's overdue. Um, there's a, a tool called uh, the uh, JSS database util jar. It's this ancient uh, Java thing that people have been struggling with forever. Well, we've got some better tools. They're coming out. They'll be 
uh, give you much greater control and flexibility over uh, your database maintenance and also things like restarting services and, and keeping an eye on, on what's going on there. Um, the beta has been publicly announced. You can go to Jamf Nation and sign up for it today uh, and, and get started on testing if you like. I wouldn't be a Jamf if I didn't mention zero day support or near zero day support. This is one of our perpetual uh, targets and goals. In dev, we are always trying to keep up with Apple uh, as much as possible. And in some cases, we actually beat them to the punch. Uh, and we're like, yeah, we're a week ahead, yes. Um, so of course, we have Mojo and uh, uh, iOS 12 coming. Uh, Joel is probably going to pay for Mojo. But uh, <laughs> uh, we have uh, new features to pay attention to and, and uh, enable in our product, uh, including OAuth for exchange accounts. Apple Business Manager, all of those new features that, that are kind of over the horizon. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to see a dark mode. I feel like we should, but that's not up to me. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this uh, just coming up. But one of the main goals that we have coming up in the, the next several months is uh, really making enrollment workflows better. Uh, Eric already talked about this is the ideal state. You, you take the device out, you plug it in. There's no step three. Well, of course, that's not real life. And so uh, at Jamf, we are trying very hard to uh, flatten out some of those workflows, make them easier and more user friendly so that uh, it, we're edging toward that state of it really is. There's no step three. Just turn the device on, and everything's going to be amazing. So uh, keep an eye out, because we're going to have a lot more to say about that uh, for iOS pretty soon and for macOS by around JNUC. So, um, that's our product stuff, which is cool and all, but I really want to brag about my folks. So uh, in pro services, like I said, we have about 20 nerds that, that wander the world and take on some of the more interesting challenges that, that our customers come up with. Uh, and I'm all about sharing the awesome. So uh, I'm going to pick out some of the highlights that we've done in the past six months uh, to about nine months ago. Um, the session description talks about a demo. I think that's really ambitious in 30 minutes, and I'm the gatekeeper to lunch, so I'd rather kind of knock through this. Um, find me later if you want to ch uh, chat more about any of these things. I'm going to be putting some URLs up on the screen. If you want to snap some photos, great. Um, they're all shortcutted URLs, so they'll get you to GitHub or whatever the, uh, the background link is. This is a super cool project, Jamf Migrator, written by Leslie Helu. Uh, professional services engineer in the States. And the, uh, the purpose of Jamf Migrator is to selectively replicate pieces of a framework from one Jamf Pro to another. You might think, gosh, that's, a, that's kind of an edge case. Well, we've seen customers use this for migrating from uh, an old Jamf Pro to a new one, whether that's in the cloud or a new infrastructure on-prem. Uh, we've seen people use this as a way to have a dev environment and promote things over to production so they can actually just grab pieces of the framework uh, by way of API and migrate them as they want to. Um, there's some newer features here that actually allow you to migrate pieces without scope attached. So there's that, that profile that I need. Yeah, but I don't want the scope to come with it. So I can actually just bring that over. Um, awesome tool. And here's the URL that is super relevant there. It is open source. It is out on our marketplace, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Super cool tool. To make Dan blush a little bit, I'm going to talk about his videos that he's posted out on YouTube. He has a channel that he assures me will always be work appropriate. Um, he's written, actually, uh, a lot of really good scripts, but also demonstration to say, you know, here's how you add in some of these more complex integrations into Jamf Pro. So he's got. Uh, LDAP, LDAP with SSL, uh, Skep Proxy, and Zabbix, so you can actually monitor your web app in real time and get some uh, uh, useful information out of that. And that is the Irishman. <laughs> A few times uh, yesterday during the Jamf workshop, but also today, we were talking about uh, using the erase install functionality built into the Mojave installer, or excuse me, the uh, High Sierra installer uh, that will, 
ultimately gets you to this state of not needing to image so much anymore. Um, so the way this works, uh, we've actually blogged this in great detail, and that's the easy button stolen straight from the blog uh, post. Um, so uh, a user or technician clicks the erase and install button, it can live in self-service, and the command kicks the Mac out from underneath you, and then you're watching a progress bar, and when it comes back, it's ready for reuse. Um, it copies the installer to a new partition, makes it bootable, restarts, then you're waiting. Eh, 10 minutes or so. Maybe it's not quite as lightning fast as that block copy of your image, but it's still going to be kind of the prescribed way to move forward. And to reference this later on, excellent blog shows you how to set it up, uh, how to, to configure your policies, what scripts to put in. It's really not that hard, uh, but having it in a nice uh, format is actually really, really helpful. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk way more about this, so uh, feel free to tune out for the moment. But um, security, and, and Ed, of course, has a lot to say about that as well. But this is one topic that has come up from our customers repeatedly. Uh, somebody somewhere at an InfoSec conference stood up on a stage and said, everybody should match these benchmarks from the Center for Internet Security, which meant all of a sudden my customers were coming to me with these spreadsheets that said, my InfoSec says I have to do this. So built some uh, open source tools, posted them out on GitHub, and we've been maintaining them over time. In case you're wondering, uh, the benchmarks have not been updated for High Sierra, which is why I haven't updated the workflows for High Sierra. But uh, I'm going to go into some depth about this tomorrow. My teammate Erin McDonald and I have been working on these for a while, and she actually updated them with configuration profiles. So it's not just Bash anymore. It's actually MDM as well. So tomorrow, uh, we'll spend a bit more time digging into these, figuring out how you can apply them, but also keep them uh, up to date for your organizational needs. And since I'm talking about Erin McDonald, uh, she's also taken an ancient tool set, ancient by tech standards. I think it's about six years old, and I'm pretty sure it's a Charles Edge Midnight uh, project um, called Winnebago. And she actually updated it so that it can work with 10.13 and help convert uh, local user directories into mobile accounts. So moves into mobile homes. That's Winnebago. Moving on just a little bit. Uh, we've talked about it already that that first impression, that first out of the box experience is wildly important for your end user and uh, can actually shape their overall opinion of IT at their new organization. Hey, I'm new, cool, here's my Mac, awesome. It doesn't have everything I need, okay. Or maybe the process of getting it enrolled is kind of painful because I've got these USB-C, I don't have the adapter, what do I need to do? So uh, there's a lot to be said about streamlining that first uh, impression out of the box. And in fact, uh, my teammate, Matt Phillips, has written a blog and also had a webinar. Uh, there's a lot of tools in here uh, that uh, have been kind of wildly uh, published and talked about, including Splash Buddy. There's a, a DEPFI, I believe. There's a couple others in there as well. Um, and so between the blog and the webinar, there's a lot of ideas about how to use these uh, tools to make your end users experience better. And it just so happens that a large portion of the uh, tools that I just talked about are actually published on the Jamf marketplace, where a lot of smart people in the community have contributed a lot of tools that work right out of the box with Jamf Pro. Uh, I've got a lot of um, uh, Pro Services work kind of published out there as well. Um, but in the spirit of sharing the awesome, if you've got something to share, we'd love to see it out on the marketplace any uh, integrations that you build or tools that you've, you've created along the way, by all means, please share it with us. And since everybody likes lunch, I'm going to wrap a little early. Feel free to catch me in the hallway or during any, uh, between any other sessions. And tomorrow, I'll be talking about Center for Internet Security. But thank you. Thanks very much, Katie. Thank you.